everyone. Have a pleasant day. As you all know, I started chapter 2 in my last video, Data Abstraction. In that, I explained about abstraction. Abstraction means hiding the details and providing access to the required data. Required data. Okay. That means when one work is shared by many people, definitely abstraction is required. You all know in software field, a particular project will be divided into so many modules and it will be given to different programmers. So at that time, definitely abstraction is very important because the programmers need not to worry about how the code is implemented and just they have to know what it does. And abstraction definition is the process of providing only the essentials and hiding the details is known as abstraction. And I explained about ADT and I explained about singly linked list, doubly linked list and also stacks ADT and QADT. Then to facilitate data abstraction, you will need to create two types of function. One is constructors and selectors. And what are constructors and selectors? Constructors are the function that builds the abstract data type selectors are the function that retrieves the information from the data type and I gave the example also which is there in your textbook and then today I'm going to start representation of abstract data type using rational numbers. The basic idea of data abstraction is to structure program so that they operate on abstract data. That means you're going to only structure the program. You're not going to implement the program, right? So that is our program should use data in such a way that as to make as few assumptions about the data as possible. At the same time, concrete data. See, you have seen abstract data. This is concrete. Concrete means solid. That means visible data. Abstract data is hidden data. Concrete data means, concrete data means, just now I told you what, Ah, yes, visible, right? Representation is defined as an independent part of the program. See, in concrete data representation, a definition for each function is known. That means visible. Is it clear? So, any, uh, any program consists of two parts. The two parts of the program are the part that operates on abstract data. That is the first part. And the part that defines a concrete representation. That means the abstract data we use. Okay. And this is, this will implement the abstract data. That means this will use the abstract data. That is called implementation. Right. So concrete representation is connected by a small set of function that implement the abstract data. Just now I told you, you know, this is uh, nothing but a small function program that will access the abstract data that is called implementation right to illustrate this technique let us consider an example to design a set of functions for manipulating rational numbers right do you know rational numbers it is a number that is expressed as a ratio of two integers correct where the denominator should not be equal to zero otherwise you will get infinity and also no fractions very good, right? Okay, example, a rational number is a ratio of integer and the rational number constitute an important subclass of real numbers. Real numbers is nothing but whole numbers, right? A rational number such as 8 by 3 or 19 by 23 is typically written as numerator divided by denominator. So here 8 is a numerator and 3 is a denominator. Fine. When both the numerator and denominator are placeholders for integer value, placeholders are nothing but variables. Placeholder, memory location, right? In the memory location, you need a holder to hold the value. Is it clear? Both parts are needed to exactly categorize the value of rational number. That means both the integers should be there to get the rational number to get the output. See, here also you, you must get, you must have 8, here you must have 3. Understood? Actually, dividing integer produce a float approximation, losing the exact precision of integer, integers. That means, you all know very well, if I divide 8 by 3, the output 
I will get in float, not in region. Right? Here you see. 8 by 3 is equal to 2.66666, etc. However, you can create an exact representation for rational numbers by combining together the numerator and denominator. You have to combine both numerator and denominator. Otherwise, you will not get the output. Right? As we know from using functional abstraction, we can start programming productively before you have an implementation for of such parts of our program. That means, see here, we are assuming it, right? Here, we are assuming that numerator is 8 and denominator is 3, right? But we have not implemented anything. We have not implemented anything. Let us begin by assuming that you already have the way of constructing a rational numbers from a numerator and a denominator, right? Everything is assumption only here. You also assume that given a rational numbers, you have a way of selecting its numerator and its denominator component. Let us further assume that the constructors and the selector are also available. See here, see this example. See, constructor and the constructor, constructor constructs a rational number with the numerator and the denominator d. See rational of n comma d. So this is constructor. Okay, and uh, numerator x and denominator y. This is these are selectors. These two are selectors. Is it clear? So here you have defined it but not implemented. Here you have assumed the x value will be passed to n and the y value will be passed to d. So only the assumption. You have not implemented anything. Understood? Right? Now, see here. Now you have the operations on the rational numbers defined in terms of the selector function, numerator and denominator. This is numerator and denominator. And the constructor function rational, but you have not yet defined this function. You have not defined anything, right? Just assumption. What you need is some way of glue together. Glue means combine or join a numerator and denominator into a compound value. The pseudocode for the representation of rational number using the above constructor and selector is x comma y is equal to 8 comma 3. So 8 will be stored in x, 3 will be stored in y. Now rational n comma d is nothing but a constructor and numerator x and here it should be denominator. Okay, so it should be denominator d e n o. Okay, so uh, x value will be passed to n and y value will be passed to y and from here you are getting 8 and 3. So 8 divided by 3 output is 2.66666 etc. Okay, we are using here a powerful strategy for designing program, wishful thinking. Wishful thinking, wishful means virpa manas in Tamil, right? So we have not yet said how the rational number is represented or how the constructor and selectors should be implemented. See, I will give you one example. Uh, see, we want CSK to win the IPL. Okay, so pretending that it has to be true. So it is our wish. So we are thinking that CSK will win IPL. Understood? Is it clear? So the methodology of a program design is wishful thinking. Wishful code is a code which calls the function that is not exist. It is not defined for completing the process. It must be defined later. Understood? So note, wishful thinking is the formation of beliefs and making decision according to that, according to what might be pleasing to image instead of appealing to reality. Just now I gave example about CSK. Is it clear children? Yes. So the next topic is list tuples. To enable us to implement the concrete level of our data abstraction, some languages like Python provides a compound structure like called pairs which is made up of a list or tuple. See, uh, list tuples, ADT or data types, like in char and other things, right? 
uh, you have list tuples, then directories, so many things are there. Later part, you will learn, right? The first way to implement pairs with the list construct. So, the first way to implement pair is with the list construct. First, we will see list. List is constructed by placing expression within square bracket separated by commas. It will be like this square bracket. One, two. Okay, separated by commas. Right? Such an expression is called a list literal. Literal means constant. List can store multiple values. Each values can be of any type and can even be another list. That means, see, 1, minus 1, uh, we will keep minus 4, right? 7.2, I consider as 7.2, okay? Right, okay, like this, right? Different data types. Even list will have another list that we will see. See, for example, list is 10, 20. The element of a list can be accessed in two ways. The first way is via a familiar method of multiple assignment, which unpacks a list into its element and binds each element to the different name. That means LST. This is a name of the list is equal to 10, 20. So here X, Y is equal to LST. LST is nothing but 10, 20. That means X will have value 10, Y will have value 20, right? In the above example, X will become 10 and Y will become 20. This is the first method, right? A second method for accessing the element in a list is by the element selection operator, also expressed using square brackets, right? You a selection operator, like array even list starts with the element, array element one, a zero and one, fine? Unlike the list literal, a square bracket expression directly following another expression does not evaluate to a list value, but instead selects an element from the value of preceding expression. That means, see, LST, already you know the name of the list, right? LST of 0. LST of 0 is nothing but I told you. Element starts with 0 and 1. So, LST of 0 is nothing but 10. LST of 1 is nothing but 20. Is it clear? This is index value. You can call it as index value. In the above, the example meant in the above, the example mentioned in the both the example mentioned above mathematically we can represent list is similar to a set. That is LST 0, 10 LS that is 1, 20. These are the position index value. You can call it as index value. Right? Where 0 is nothing but index position, 10 is nothing but value. Same way, 1 is nothing but index position, 20 is nothing but value. Same like array. Anyway, a bundling two values together into one can be considered as a pair. This is considered as pair. List are the common method to do so. Therefore, list can be called as pairs. Okay, representing rational numbers using list. Fine. You can... Now represent the rational numbers as a pair of two integer in pseudo code. See here, this is nothing but a constructor and these are nothing but a selector. Okay, rational n comma d. It will return n and d. See n, you take it as 10. Okay, uh, or uh, 20 if you want to take this or the previous example n 8 d 3. Okay, so from here. You consider this as 8, this as 3. Okay, so return x of 0. x of 0 is nothing but 8. x of 1 is nothing but 3. Understood? So these are selectors. These are constrictors. Understood everyone? So I am stopping it here. The next class I will start tuple. So today I covered rational number that is abstract data type using rational numbers. In that you have seen the different parts of the programming, right? And then I explained about uh, wistful thinking, then list and tuples. Okay, go through the video. Still, if you have any doubts, you can ask me. Okay, children, see you. Bye.